What is happening to our parliamentary democracy and political debate in Canada? There seems to be a growing sense that at best it is being stifled and at worst it's becoming irrelevant. A quick scan of the provincial legislatures show that many premiers are finding that governing is easier and more efficient when parliament is shut down, but what then of democracy? Here's your weekly West Block Primer. This is normal parliamentary procedure. The government sells its policies and the opposition asks questions. But more and more, we're seeing it less and less. In British Columbia, Premier Christy Clark shut down her legislature last May. They're expected back in March, but with an election just around the corner, members will likely only sit for 19 days in a full calendar year. The elected members in Alberta, meanwhile, won't be together in the same room until this March. But then they're scheduled to only sit for 39 days before heading out on a nearly five month long summer break. On the other side of the country, in Newfoundland and Labrador, Premier Kathy Dunderdale reopened her legislature in March 2012 after sitting for a mere 33 days in the previous 14 months. And in Ontario, while the legislature hasn't been shuttered for quite as long, former Premier Dalton McGuinty turned the lights out on October the 15th. His decision to prorogue was mired in controversy, cutting last year's sitting to just 78 days. Well, two people who have studied parliamentary democracy extensively are joining me now. Alison Lode of the Samara Institute. That's a nonpartisan group dedicated to improving political participation. Uh, she's in Toronto. And here in Ottawa with me, Aaron Weary of McLean's Magazine, who quite literally sits in the House of Commons probably more than most MPs. Welcome to you both. Aaron, first of all, my condolences for having to sit in the House for as long as you do. Listen, in terms of shutting the legislatures across the country, how big a problem is that for our democracy? I think it's a huge problem. I, if, if, we, if we believe we send these people here for something for some reason uh, then it serves to, to reason that they should be in the legislature doing something the legislature is ultimately the the best way to hold a government to account to know what a government is doing and to challenge that government uh, and if they're not in session we can't do that as citizens as, as MPs etc uh, and this leads sort of to the larger question these legislatures being shut down why are they being shut down so easily and that really goes, I think, to the question of, of have these legislatures become irrelevant? Have the people who are there become irrelevant? Have, has what goes on there become irrelevant? Which brings us to Alison Lote and the Samaria Institute. Alison, you're about to release a report uh, with the intriguing title, Lost in Translation or Just Lost, uh, talking about this very thing that, that Aaron has brought up. Uh, what did you find about Canadians' attitude towards parliamentary democracy in this study? Well, it probably comes as no surprise that politics is not always held in high regard uniformly across the country. And uh, some of the research that we've done at Samara suggests there's uh, a couple of different reasons for that. One is there's a perception that uh, MPs or reality perhaps don't represent their constituents. Um, and then there's a second one uh, that we, we found, which is almost a, just over a quarter of Canadians think that Ottawa is dealing with the issues they care about. So we thought it would be interesting to get at some of those questions that Aaron raised and said, okay, is this sense of irrelevancy, one of perception or reality. So we compared uh, what was discussed in the House of Commons last year in 2012 um, against the policy priorities that Canadians say that they have. Uh, and we found there was a little more alignment than that 27% might suggest, uh, but lots of room for improvement and some really interesting observations on how uh, party control and party discipline might be affecting the ability of the House of Commons to reflect Canadians' priorities. Okay, you, you brought up a lot of interesting things there. The, the, the one thing that I want to deal with, first of all, though, and let's deal with the, the idea of lost in translation. Allison says that while it's not perfectly aligned, in other words, what Canadians want talked about and what Parliament is talking Talking about, it's not so out of whack that you'd, that you'd think that there was something wrong, and yet a majority of Canadians say the whole thing's broken. So where is the disconnect? Is it in how it's reported? Is it in how it's seen, or simply the effectiveness of it? I think there's a certain disconnect in that if you're a citizen watching the House of Commons, if you're a citizen watching Question Period, it's hard to understand that those people are there on your behalf. Uh, because they don't seem to be acting on anyone's behalf except their party leaders to a certain extent. And this gets to a, a, a very real problem, I think, with the House of Commons, which is that MPs are so beholden to their party leaders that we've sort of lost touch with any other purpose they have. They're all sort of messengers uh, and foot soldiers for their parties. 
Uh, and that, I think, is where the disconnect comes. Uh, you know, if, if you flip on question period and you just see your MP standing up, reading from a piece of paper the party talking points that he's been handed, and not expressing any kind of view that really fits with your concerns, you automatically don't relate to what's going on there. You know, Allison, I'm not sure you can see Aaron, but he's got that sort of thousand-yard stare in his eyes, <laughs> having sat in the House as long as he has. Uh, you know, but you go through those debates where MPs stand up and they debate for hours and hours in the House of Commons to maybe about 10 other people who aren't even listening. And the outcome of the vote is already known because, as Aaron says, it's all along party lines. I mean, you would think then that looking at it that way, debate in Parliament has become irrelevant. Why are we trying to increase debate? Or, in fact, should we be going the other way and saying there's got to be a better way of running democracy than the old Westminster-style Parliament? I think you raise there's there's two parts to that. I mean, one, what changes can we make so that the current system as we have it uh, works better? And Aaron touched on this uh, a little bit or quite a bit about the role of uh, political parties in the House of Commons. Uh, what was interesting in some of the research we did is that there were differences in the in the alignment between the House of Commons and Canadians' priorities uh, across the day, um, and the times where MPs were freer of their party control. Times like private members' bills and routine proceedings when they're doing things like introducing petitions, summarizing committee reports, those were more aligned to the Canadians' priorities than uh, than other times like question period and government business. So it's so notable it would seem that then when that MPs... That yeah, more sorry. of that would be better, right? Well, there, so right. So there's changes that can be made, I think, within the system. But as you've, ra you've mentioned, I mean, there is a more fundamental issue here. Uh, a lot of the MPs we have spoken to in other work, um, you know, one, one House leader, for example, said the House of Commons has a monopoly on, the on a waste of time. And there's something that to be said there. If this organization is not working for the very members of Parliament themselves, never mind the public, I think it does behoove us to ask some questions about how our representative democracy can function in the 21st century if this system isn't working. Aaron, when you write about this, when you talk to MPs about it, I mean, is there a sense even among the participants here that this is all sort of really bad kabuki theater that just isn't resonating and making politics even more irrelevant to the average person? Yeah, I think there is a certain undercurrent. I think everybody sort of understands that it's, it's a bit silly at this point. You know, Alison talks about the, the scene in the House during debate, and she's right. When, when, when there's a debate going on in the House about legislation, there's usually one person speaking and about you know, 10 other people sort of sitting around doing paperwork and not paying much attention. What's odd about that is, you know, odd other than the scene, is that the debate itself can be fairly smart and interesting, but it doesn't matter. And everybody understands it doesn't matter because ultimately nothing that gets said in that House of Commons is going to change what the outcome of that vote is. You know, and I, so I think you start to see around the edges certain backbenchers starting to say, like, mm, this doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You know, Brent Rathgeber, the the Conservative MP in Alberta sort of saying that, you know, MP shouldn't be automatons, like these sorts of comments. But I don't, it, it's, a, it's a question of political will, ultimately, whether anybody wants to make changes. You know, you could go into the Elections Act and remove the stipulation that, that MPs need party leader signatures to run for office under a party banner. Uh, but who's going to make that change? Uh, ultimately, it has to be MPs, and ultimately, it has to be party leaders that are willing to make that change. And so you need both public, you need public uh, concern, and you need ultimately public political will to change it. Well, I'll just bring up one thing. I mean, that was in Allison's report uh, that 55 percent say they are satisfied with Canada's democracy. That's an approval rating that is miles ahead of the U.S. Congress. So at least we know that we're not as bad as the U.S. I would encourage anybody to take a look at the Samara Institute's report on all of this coming up. Allison Lode in Toronto, Aaron Wary of McLean's Magazine here in Ottawa. Thank you both very much for your time this morning. Appreciate it.